That is Elevation Worship here at Real Life Radio 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine. It's local Christian radio for you and your family. And their song called Unstoppable God. It is 846. We welcome you back. The Vine Morning Show on a Monday morning. And we welcome those of you watching the YouTube channel and also on cable TV channel 15 as it is Monday. And it is time uh, again. We welcome Laura in this morning. Good morning, Laura. How are you this morning? Good morning, Mark. Oh, I'm great. Glad to be here. Well, it's great to have you along. And uh, this gentleman on your on your immediate right, yes. my left, yes. Pastor Tim Reynolds. Uh, he's back with us again this yes. morning. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Mark and Laura. Good to see you all this morning. Good way to start out the week. That is right. Good. It's good to see you. He, we didn't know if Tim was going to make it, but he's able to be here today. Okay. So it's awesome to have you guys here. We're going to talk about a new a number of things, numerous things today and where to begin you know the topic tim kind of brought it out last week let's talk about israel and how it relates in prophecy and kind of where we're at i think we all three of us agree that israel is the timepiece Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's God's centerpiece for what's going on in the Mm -hmm. world. And isn't it interesting Mm -hmm. that a tiny nation the the size of New Jersey is so much on uh, the world stage? Uh, That's just amazing. And those of us that study our Mm -hmm. Bibles know that Mm -hmm. that's what's going to take place at the end of of this age, the end of time. And we see that forming uh, at this moment. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And anytime I, I think about atheists, I'm like, if you would just read this and you would just look at this and see how it's always in news, it's always right. con- it's the most controversial piece of real estate on the planet. Oh, it is, isn't it? I mean, it, it really is. Yeah. It's like, how can you not get this? Right. Mm-hmm. But you know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 that they're willingly ignorant. Yeah. They just don't desire to. I think mm-hmm. you could show it plain as day. And uh, all you have to do is get your newspaper and read the headlines, you know. Right. And the book of Zechariah talks about how that Jerusalem will be a cup of trembling. Yes for the nations and it is nobody seems to know what to do with it <laughs> how many presidents in a row have come through thinking they have uh, you know come mm-hmm. up with the solution right. for the middle east and yet there is no solution and th- right. there there will be a false solution which we'll talk about yes. uh, when the antichrist comes on the scene but there will not yes. be true peace until the prince of peace returns yes. yeah. oh yeah and then and something else i want to throw out we can discuss a little bit too guys uh, this is a big uh, well let's see when is that oh it's the seventh the seventh of July is big for uh, Ken Ham. Right. And uh, he is opening up Noah's Ark that they have have constructed Mm -hmm. over by the Creation Museum. Right. Mm. And uh, that is getting ready to open. And isn't it kind of funny how things are developing? That being built and going to be a major attraction, right? And mm-hmm. he's already getting opposition from atheist groups. Oh, he and is like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Hate, hate mail, right. death threats. Yeah. Oh my! Yes, death yes, <laughs> yes. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and, wow. and that happening and taking place and with and we were just talking about this off the air just a moment ago. The Britons, they're voting. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 With yeah. all that going, exiting on. the European mm-hmm. Union. That's all interesting mm-hmm. too. Uh, have either of you had the opportunity? opportunity to visit the creation museum Mm -mm. yes boy it is fantastic and i i cannot imagine what this is going to be like now with Mm -hmm. the the life-size replica of noah's ark and having the opportunity to see that and you've got to admire ken ham because he's taken hits for this as you said been criticized and and ridiculed but he's just gone for it and uh, i think it's a great thing for people to be able to see and it's not a far drive from here no you go to louisville kentucky and go north towards cincinnati and it's around petersburg uh Kentucky. Yeah. It's near the Kentucky Ohio border. Okay. And I believe, Tim and Laura, it's about thirty miles where the actual Noah's Ark is on a hill. And it's actually about 30 miles from the Creation Museum. Oh. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I didn't know the 30. distance from mm-hmm. the Creation Museum. Wow. But it's a, you can make it probably in four hours mm-hmm. from here, I would really? say. It's a pretty yes. easy drive. Yeah. yeah. And how many times have you been to the I've Creation Museum? I've just been one time. I've been twice to the really? Creation yeah. Museum. And the second time we went back, you see something totally... It's like reading the Bible. You yeah. Know? Yes. When you're reading the Bible and then you go back and you read it again, you interpret something totally different yes. from it. it. That's like the Creation Museum. Yeah. And it's first class, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it sure is. It sure is. It's really nice. It's Wonderful. some. It's worth a trip. A good day trip to go. Sure. Yes. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. So that's a that's a that's a neat thing mm-hmm. going on, as you said. Mm-hmm. And isn't yeah. it interesting that Jesus said in.
Matthew 24, as the days of Noah were, mm-hmm. so yes. shall also be the coming Ooh, of the Son of Man. That's right. So mm-hmm. is it yes, just a coincidence? Yes. I think that's kind of what you're getting at, yeah. that, that we're wow. hearing about wow. Noah and, yeah. and that sort of thing, and also discussing the return of the Lord. Mm-hmm. So wow. a lot of things shaping up in our world yeah, right now. It is, it is. So yeah, yeah, I want to go to that. I want to go to that ark. Yeah. You know, I know yeah. some friends of ours that have gone. They uh, they are lifetime members of the Creation Museum. Is that right? And they got to go visit the ark wow. as uh, as they were building it. And they said, oh, wow. you know, to see the pictures of it on social media and paper information, but to go see it in person. And it wasn't, all, you know, completely constructed yet. Right. But they were in awe. You know, it was I like, bet. wow, yeah. how huge is this? And it has to, you know. It's on a hill, just like it was in back yes. in Noah's days, right. you know. Yeah, Good. yeah, and you have to be you have to be shuttled up to it. You can't walk shuttled. up. Shuttled? What have do you be, mean shuttled? Oh, uh oh! Be, <laughs> be, I was be, really considering no. taking my kids here. Right. Oh no, you, you, you ride in, okay. a, in in shuttle buses oh, up there oh, too. Oh, I can handle that. Okay. Not flying, Laura. Yeah. You're not flying. So. <laughs> <laughs> One of those little tubes they put you in from the um, arch. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I. Oh no! Now wait a minute. I'm backpedaling. No, you park below and then they take you up the hill in shuttle buses up. There too, it's I my can understanding. Neat. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that neat? Isn't yeah, that it cool? is. Yeah. You know, I would yeah. love to take my kids and, and the youth today, before they enter college, they need such a firm grip on things. I was mm-hmm. just talking to some friends of mine. In college, they try to talk you out of all of that stuff sure. and, and try to disprove it. And whenever you lock that into the kids' minds with something, visual like that and mm-hmm. they can touch and see and feel i think it would be very instrumental in in my kids mm-hmm. and all the kids to go Absolutely. see that they could yeah. oh yeah I'm well you know in our culture today uh, we're questioning our identity you know mm-hmm. and and even children now are confused about different things right. and you've got to have the foundation of creation realizing that we have a creator almighty god that created us and also that we are accountable to yes. and so the world wants wants to push that out so that way we're not accountable to anyone we can do whatever we want to do behave how we want to behave and i think creation is foundational and ken ham has done a tremendous job and that's kind of been his his ministry Mm -hmm. is speaking on creation and and uh, the reality of genesis you know noah's ark and those sorts of things yeah so yeah if you ever get a chance to go to the creation museum you want to go back again yeah Yeah, i bet i'm really considering it because um yeah, we need a place to go, and and the summer is still young, so maybe a lot of people will there you go. Oh, yeah, travel yeah. that way. And well, you know, it's going to be busy the first few weeks, I'm months. Sure it's it open, you know. Yeah, people absolutely. are already planning on major vacations and everything. It's yeah, good. It's but we've got some exciting things happening here locally, yeah. guys. Yes. That's yes, coming yes, up. Yes. And uh, Monday, July 4th, Pastor Tim, what's going on in Mount Vernon? Hey, we are excited about our Hope for America prayer rally coming up. It'll be at noon at the Jefferson County Courthouse. We're going to be over on the north side. We had originally planned to be on the south side, but we've got a little more room on the north side of the courthouse. And uh, and I was thinking on my way over here, you know, if you don't live in Jefferson County, we still want you to come, all right? Yes. Uh, we just want Christians to come, and if you're a non-Christian, you can come too. We Absolutely. invite you as well and uh, to come and be a part of our Hope for America prayer rally. We're excited to have the Victory Boys Quartet. Yes. They are fantastic, mm-hmm. if you've not heard them. They're going to begin setting up and singing around uh, sometime between 11 and 11.30. Mm-hmm. So we'll have some gospel music. We invite people to bring their lawn chairs. Uh, we're going to have plenty of water. We're going have some canopies set up for shade and uh, we've got american flags for everyone of course it's july the 4th independence Mm -hmm. day as well and uh, then we have some uh, pastors who are going to lead prayers i mentioned merle fullerton uh, Mm -hmm. last week a good friend of mine as well as brother dennis myers from howard community church uh, and uh, my friend sean hicks from blessed hope baptist church in mount vernon they're all going to be uh, leading prayers as well be about a 30 to 45 minute program and uh, we're praying for nice weather on that day but rain or shine, uh, yes. hot or cold. I don't think it'll be cold, mm-hmm. but uh, we invite folks just to come out, be a part of that. And I know it's a busy day. Folks will be cooking out and different things, but mm-hmm. let's just take some time to call out yes. to God and pray for yes. repentance and revival. And I believe it begins with us. You know, mm-hmm. um, we can't wait for the world to change its ways. Mm-hmm. God's people need to get things right. And that's what this prayer rally is about. That's right. And that's on the, instead of the South Lawn, the North Lawn. Now, yes, sir. Right, yeah. Too? Yeah. It'll be right. on the North Side. And uh, as I said, it gives us a little more room there and room for people to to sit and such um 
on that day. Amen. Yeah, going to be a you know a great day, that's for sure. And there's a Facebook page, Tim. Right, if, if people want uh, information, they can go to Hope for America 2016. Yeah, right, 2016. They can check that out. We're putting reminders on there, and uh, yeah, we just want folks to come out, help us spread the word. If you'll share that page and tell folks, hey, let's go down to the prayer rally at noon next Monday uh, on July the fourth, and I think you'll be blessed by it. Oh, All right, and we're heading into nine o'clock. But before we go, guys, also there's something else coming up. Uh, August the 6th, mm-hmm. and a night honor Israel. Let's uh, have a little bit of information about that, and then we'll come back and talk more about it. Well, you go, o'clock. Lori. Well, you know, I'll, I'll just <laughs> start it off, and then you can run with it. But um, it's just such an honor to be a part again of mm-hmm. our second uh, night to honor Israel, and it's going to be at Tim's church, the Baptist Temple. And we want we want everybody to get this deep within you, get this into your core that this is an important thing. And God's eyes are watching to see who comes to that. That's right. Yeah. God's eyes. I mean, it says our Bible will tell us that that He's going to bless you and He is going to curse you for being against Israel. And I think that that's been such a hidden treasure sure. almost mm-hmm. in the Christians because I didn't know anything about it till just in these past few years yeah and we don't understand what could happen if we if we don't support israel um isaiah 40 says comfort that's right comfort my people what does that mean that means to honor them that means to pray for them that means to collect donations for these people and the holocaust survivors there's about probably 10 more years there'll still be a Holocaust survivor to give to. And those people are very important to bless. And it's pitiful. Some of the things, um, I want to share this real fast. Mm. Um, If you've never seen what these people are living in, the Holocaust survivors, they're elderly and they're sick and they're poor. and, And like one lady, if this doesn't paint the picture, she had a little scarf around her neck and you could tell that she was just living in just a room, just just nothing Hmm. and her glasses were so thick her eyes just looked huge and and she was kind of bent over and it was just pitiful it was just Hmm. pitiful this is one of god's people this is a travesty it should never be happening and if more people if more christians Mm -hmm. knew about the troubles that these people were going through i believe they would give but it's kind of a out of sight out of mind Mm -hmm. and just Israel in general, we are called to help, and and they're special. Hmm. And Christians have got to learn and spread the word to other You're Christians. Right. This is a special nation, and it's the apple of God's eye. And you know, I got to thinking, God is long suffering and He's slow to anger, but when it comes to Israel, He's not. Hmm. You That's poke right. somebody in the eye, they're yeah. going to react. Right. And God reacts quickly. Have you ever heard of the book Eye to Eye? Uh-huh. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it shows within 24, 48 hours, you're going to get it. Hmm. And why? our government, why our leaders don't understand, why Christians don't understand this. It's baffling to me, and it's nothing shy of Satan's just putting up Put that a veil. wall. Yeah. Put a veil up. Yeah, but yeah. Well, and, and it's it needs to be taught and preached from the pulpits, too, because yes. the people, the Bible says my people are without knowledge because the, the preachers are not preaching it. Yes. And, uh, yeah, Israel is so important. And you know, you mm-hmm. talk about the Holocaust. Isn't it interesting that uh, some are trying to disprove the Holocaust even happened? Oh, my goodness. You know, when you hear that, it's it just amazing. And how, can they, how can people do that? Because you look and you see the survivors right. and you know the... The, the physical the physical uh, part of it they went through the mental part yes, of it right. and how could anybody deny that yeah yeah and you know it's uh, it's like if you tell a lie often enough it becomes truth right. to some mm-hmm. people yes and uh, that's kind of the idea but as you said they are God's chosen people mm-hmm. and uh, we're to stand by them and uh, so that's what this night to honor Israel yes. is all about and we'll get into more of the details what that's going to be like and I think we're going to talk a little bit about Israel and prophecy too yes. All right, we're going to do that as we're with Pastor Tim Reynolds this morning from Malvern and Baptist Temple and uh, Waltonville Community Church. And Laura's with us as she is every Monday. And we're going to come back and talk more about Israel and much more this morning here on the Vine Morning Show. That's from the Afters here at Real Life Radio, 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine. Their song called Broken Hallelujah. It is 9-11, and we welcome you back. It's The Vine Morning Show on this Monday morning. I'm Mark, along with Laura and Pastor Tim. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. All right, we're talking about 
Oh, just numerous things today. We're going to talk mm-hmm. about Israel. Yes. And Laura, what are you, you had something you wanted to share with us you about You know, um, there's about a billion things that Tim and I probably like to talk about regarding Israel. Just off air, we were chatting about Yehuda Glick. Yeah. And oh. I've spoken about him before to our Vine listeners, but he's this crazy redheaded Jew, and he <laughs> is on fire. Yeah. I mean, and he just really, um, there's no boundaries for him. I mean, he just feels he's unafraid. like he's unafraid. Yeah. And and he is huge about getting the Jews up to the Temple Mount and giving them the opportunity to pray and he mm-hmm. is a fighter. And you know, it's okay to be a fighter. Well, sure. It really is. I think sometimes we think we just need to lay down and die. We're a Christian and we got to be all nicey nicey and soft. No, we don't. Righteous anger, nothing wrong with that. Um, but anyway, he's he's been shot four times in the chest and at real close range wow. too and he survived it it was miraculous i mean it's only the hand of god mm-hmm. and and so anyway he's just a huge advocate and he's huge um and very excited about rebuilding being a part of rebuilding the third temple wow which is just fascinating for i mean people this is real this is real our eyes could very possibly see the third temple this generation of people walking on the planet right now could witness that third temple easily and when we were there uh in israel a couple of years ago they already they told us they've got everything ready i mean yes. they, the the, the mm-hmm. priestly garments are mm-hmm. ready um everything is there it's just how it's going to come about yes. um in order for that to be allowed right now we think well there's just no way because mm-hmm. the muslims have the the dome of the rock there and they don't mm-hmm. want to give up any of that real estate right. um but the bible says it's going to happen mm-hmm. um so it's just a matter of when we don't know that you know we're yes. not date setters we have no, no. idea when no. but it's just interesting we live at a time when these things are coming to pass yes yeah. it sure is it's just a big mm-hmm. highlight but anyhow how he um, and a friend was studying the stones of Aaron on the breastplate. And he said they got to, you know, diving into this. And and then they got to understanding there's some scripture in um, Genesis, I believe, that talks about gold in Israel. And I should have pulled it up for you. I think it's in Genesis. Uh, But anyway, they really got got to pouring over that and thinking, you know, and something, and I can't remember the whole story, but E-I-L-A-T mountains is where they felt like they were to start digging, and they have struck gold. Mm-hmm. And the first account was like a billion in gold, and now they think there could be several billion, but the mining and the time, I mean, sure. it's just going to take great effort, and I don't know any. I keep searching for new updates. i am not seen any since last year. Um, but isn't that profound? I mean, we know from what the what the temple's supposed to be like that that it's pretty amazing yeah and you know you speak of of them finding gold there and i had not heard that you know i I know Mm -hmm. that that recently in recent years israel has discovered natural gas and oil and we know the bible talks about in ezekiel chapter 38 you've got what we call the battle of gog and magog where Mm -hmm. um the the nation to the north which north from israel is russia Uh and uh, a, a, a group of muslim nations coming down against israel and god God says, I will put hooks in their jaws to draw them in. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense that something like, whether it's gold or oil um, and and something else I didn't realize until I went to Israel is how much food they produce and grow. Did you know that Israel actually feeds many of its neighbors that are its enemies? That Israel actually sends food out? They they grow so much food. Uh, You don't hear much of that about that in your in your secular news, Mm -hmm. but they grow so much and they're feeding some of those nations even around them. But something's going to cause these nations to come in it could be the discovery of gold and you know we mentioned how that and just in the past week boy things just are speeding along yes, it seems like yes, they are. britain has exited the european union mm-hmm. and it has affected the economies of the world you know yes. we live in a time now it's a global economy but what has gone up in price is gold mm-hmm. and so could this discovery could have something to do uh withdrawing mm-hmm. these nations against israel because they have found this this wealth of gold possibly right. you know I, I, don't right. know. I don't know but uh you know there, there there are things going on in the world that that it's hard to if, if any preacher can tell you they know exactly what's going to happen next you can't Mm-mm. but when you study god's word and you see some of these things forming uh we do know that the time of the return of jesus christ has got to be near uh, 
Absolutely it is. And, you know, sometimes, like, when we put our hand to our face, you know, you really can't see. That's a good point, and When yeah. things are just so mm. close and they're surrounding us right now, sometimes it takes a little time before we step back and say, oh, yeah, that's what that was. Right. That's how that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we need to we need to strive to keep our focus on God and God's mm-hmm. word because it's mm-hmm. easy to get to get off focus and to to stress about things going on in the world. And what about this and and all that? You know, I, I advise people at our church to keep current on things, but don't dwell on it too much. If you mm-hmm. watch too much, mm-hmm. we have a 24 hour news cycle mm-hmm. and the Internet. You can get pretty depressed over watching the news you and all. Can. But, you know, we don't want to stick our head in the sand. Stay no. current, yes. but also stay in the word of God, because, yes. you know, the Bible says in Isaiah 26, three, that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. We need to keep our mind on him. That's Mm -hmm. very good. And I loved what you said about how, I mean, Israel is lush, and it is amazing. And think about where it was, and Jerusalem was a wasteland. It was. It was nothing. And now, look, I mean, it proves God. Over and over, Israel is proving God's word. It's proving the truth. It is. Yeah, it's just amazing. That really stood out to me, how that there's areas there that used to be swampland. And now they are growing all kinds of fruits mm-hmm. and vegetables and things like that. See, that's what amazes me because you talk to people like yourself, Tim, that's been over to Israel and everything is rock. It seems like everything right. is rock-based. Mm. But then they, they're they able to produce all this food and everything, and it's like, where are they growing it they at? They are, and they have learned how to irrigate places that before you couldn't yes. grow anything. Mm. And they are also learning how to desalinate the water in the Dead Sea. Oh, mm. I think I've oh heard my. something yeah, about in order that. To use yes. some of it and it's just amazing and you know you say well how how is that god has blessed them with mm-hmm. that ability he just has absolutely that's the bottom line of it all yeah. he's given them these crazy new ideas and and from health to technology they're coming up with all sorts yeah. of things and many of them don't recognize god yeah they don't recognize right. it's it's he that's been the one to give them that absolutely. ability if you if you, you can look at this up online if you take the the number of uh, nobel peace prize and as you said, whether it's uh, medical advances, technological, it's disproportionate how many of those are Jews that have accomplished these things. And it's Good only because point. of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Shining down his favor upon them. And yeah. there's just there's this thing after thing after thing after thing. I just get crazy wrapped up into it. Um, even the Hebrew language being restored. That's another one. Ooh, yeah. Just, just amazing. Yeah. yeah. No other civilization has been yes. gone because you think about it they were scattered in AD 70 that's when Titus the Roman ransacked Jerusalem and the Jews were scattered yes. then they come back in 1948 and revive a language that had been dead yes, for yes. nearly 2,000 years yes. and that's never happened before no, right no. Isn't that crazy how can people deny this mm-hmm. just Israel is just bubbling with incredible things it is and the world just eh. yeah, not that big a deal. Not that big of a deal. And yeah. I'm just, I just wanted to start jumping up and down doing cartwheels. Are you crazy? Can you not see this? And like, oh yeah, that's cool. And then they just forget it. And <laughs> like, I don't understand. Well, again, it's a, it's another case where this is all going on, and we realize it. But the secular media, they they know it. They're just not wanting to report on it, right? Mm-hmm. Because oh no, I don't want to bring that out. You know, I don't right. want people to know. We don't want people to know what's going on over right. there. Right. And, you know, Israeli TV is probably sending the signal out of everything oh, that's going yes. on. Sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, here in the United States, we're not, uh, well, we don't want to broadcast that because we right. don't want to get people's hopes up or that's anything it. like yeah, that. Yeah, or cause any kind of dissension mm-hmm. or, or whatever. But, uh, yeah, you know, as I said before, well, many, many Jews in Israel are secular. They're, they don't yes. even acknowledge God. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. those that are, are practicing Jews are very sincere mm-hmm. About their religion, right. yet they don't recognize that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. is the Messiah, that he has right. come. And so our duty as Christians, New Testament believers, is to witness to yes. the Jews and the Gentiles that Jesus Christ has come. He mm-hmm. is the Messiah. He died and rose again. And that's the main message that we want to spread to yes. to both Jew and Gentile. Absolutely. And we're, we're not called to say, okay, well, if you are a, a Messianic Jew, fine. If you're an Orthodox Jew, 
it's not up to us. God doesn't say only good ones. <laughs> right, yeah. You know, yeah, only if, <laughs> if that was the case, we would all be in a world of hurt, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. sure would. And it's like so many people, that's their argument. Even the Christians, well, they don't believe in Jesus. You know what? God didn't say anything about that. He said, comfort them, be good to them. And, you know, they are the apple of my eye, You're whether right. they believe or not. And yeah. I think that's where a lot of the Christians really lose it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why, too, that many of the, the Jews don't trust Christians completely. Okay. Yeah, because hmm. you know they kind of have this idea. Well, they think they're they're better or different because they they do believe in Jesus Christ, and that's a barrier that we've got to get yes. over in reaching the Jewish people yes. uh, with the message of Jesus Christ. They mm. think that uh, they have replaced us. Y right. Yes, yes. Like what you said. That, the yeah. Replacement, replacement theology mm -hmm. that the church somehow has has replaced Israel, and they they don't now receive any of the promises of God, and nothing can be farther from oh. the truth. It's absolutely ridiculous, but that's why we've got to educate people. Yeah, absolutely. We've got to educate ourselves, educate others, and so we can understand this because, you know, I still believe, um, like Franklin Graham and all the wonderful things that he is doing, and your church is on fire, and you've got a church that's on fire, certain churches are mm -hmm. really pushing and moving forward on issues. God is going to bless us, and God is, I believe that, you know, this, this um, trouble that's to come, I believe that's one of the true protections that will come to certain people. I believe it yeah, to certain yeah. Christians. If you are honoring God's people and if you are giving to God's people and you are behind the Jews, that supernatural favor will surround you. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, Laura, because, and, and Tim, I, I think the older generation sees that mm -hmm. now because they've they've grown up in generation after generation and they know where they stand right now and they can look back and see that's exactly right i think the older generation realizes yes. that and yeah. that's why they're passing it down to yes. us yeah. right absolutely yeah and we need to educate the younger generation you know mm -hmm. because they need to hear these things that have mm -hmm. been passed down and as i said before i think it relies the, the responsibility lies with preachers in the pulpit yes. mm -hmm. preaching some of these things um about why is israel important and about yes. things going on in our world today and and uh, we need to talk about the judgment of god you know i know those are not comfortable topics it's a lot easier to talk about about five ways to be a better you and all mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. Right, right. But, uh, you know, some of these things have got to be addressed because Christ is coming soon. And our job is to tell people that, that, that one day God's going to judge this world and you need to get saved and you yes, need to repent right. of your sin and receive Jesus Christ as your right. Savior. Well, I was talking about the older generation, older generations in our churches today that have yes. been there for so long and that have heard the word of God yes. and now they're seeing it more and more. That's what I'm referring to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it's Absolutely. it's interesting we live in a time mm -hmm. when we see these things coming to pass that we've heard before mm -hmm. and now, as you said, it's like it's right up close mm -hmm. and uh, if you're not paying attention, you'll miss it. Right, mm -hmm. that's true. It, yeah, even that close you can miss it yeah yeah so mm. anyway but but yeah that has just kind of been a job that that i believe us that are watching has and it is to kind of build that bridge with israel again build that bridge with the jews and have that great understanding that that is that's our calling and that's what our night to honor israel is all about yes. we'll talk about that for a moment it's on saturday august the 6th at mount vernon baptist temple and we're on route 37 south uh, in mount vernon 817 woodland drive you know nowadays you got to say the address so people put it in their right. gps right. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. that's true but uh, 817 woodland drive and we're going to begin at five o'clock in the evening. Now, this is a great thing to start with: chicken and dumplings. And mm. free chicken yeah. and dumplings I'm dinner. Looking forward but, to that. but don't come to the dinner and leave. That's no. not the purpose. We mm -hmm. we don't want to just feed you and leave. The idea is to come have a have a good meal, and then at six o'clock we're going to start our program. And we've got some exciting things. Well, mm -hmm. for, for first of all, Laura yeah. is going to sing for us, mm -hmm. and That's she right. does a fantastic right. job. Thank and we're you. looking forward to that. Uh, my friend Dan Reagan from Mount Vernon yes. is going to perform a Passover Seder demonstration, Wonderful. and we're looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. uh, we are still trying to iron out the details to have our friend Amir Sarfati with Behold Israel to do a video for us to update us on current events in Israel 
and how his ministry is is doing and how he's he's a jew that's saved mm-hmm. and uh, he and how he he's doing and then uh, laura's brother rodney mm-hmm. malat is going to be our guest speaker mm-hmm. rodney has been to israel three times and he'll mm-hmm. do a fantastic job he's gonna i don't know exactly what he's going to talk about but yeah. um, probably about why it's important for us to support mm-hmm. the nation of israel it's going to be a great program we've got some things we're going to going to give away that night oh, and uh, just encourage people to come and be a part of that on saturday august the 6th yeah, yeah it's it's exciting to know and it will we'll be here before you know mm-hmm. it so yeah mark yes. your calendar now please do and and come and join it's going to be a lot of fun yeah and yeah. if you say well i don't i don't know a whole lot about the yeah. history of israel and all that well that's a good reason to mm-hmm. come because yes. you you will go away better educated than when absolutely. you came i promise you mm-hmm. absolutely different mm-hmm. yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah August 6th, Saturday yes. night, 5 o'clock at Malvernon Baptist Temple, south of Malvernon on Route 37. We're going to come back and talk more with Pastor Tim and Laura here in just a few moments on the Vine Morning Show. That is from the group for King and Country here at Real Life Radio, 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine. That's their song called Priceless. Actually, that's their uh, movie that one of the, I believe, uh, Joel Smallbone is in, uh, Priceless, about trafficking. And that movie coming out in the fall. And stay tuned. You'll be hearing more about that movie, I'm sure, as we'll have more details on that. We're with Pastor Tim. And Laura, this morning here on the Vine Morning Shows, we're to- talking about Hope for America Prayer Rally in Mount Vernon, uh, Night to Honor Israel coming up in August, and a little bit of Bible prophecy surrounding Israel this morning. Guys, we're going to talk about something that is very important here. And, you know, most people don't realize it, but the temple is the main thing that's got to be built before the return of our Lord. Well, you know, you mentioned the temple a while ago, and uh, let me just read a passage of Scripture from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse 2. The Apostle Paul is writing here, and uh, he gives some good advice to believers then and now. He says that uh, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. So number one is we need to not be not be troubled. We need to be uh, educated. We need to know what's going on, but we don't have to be fearful. Uh, and then he goes on and talks about in verse three, he says, let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come. Now, this is speaking of the Lord's return. That day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Yes. So there's going to be spiritual deception. And I think we certainly are seeing that today, aren't yes. we? Yes. So that falling away is a spiritual deception and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. The Antichrist is referred to by several several names. Here's two of them, man of sin, son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God. You see, that's what Satan desires. Satan has always desired to be worshipped mm-hmm. as God. He as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So what is going to take place? Now, the rest of that chapter tells us, here's the good news. You know, people will say, well, I don't don't know who the Antichrist is. I wonder who it's going to be. He will not be revealed until Christians are taken away from this earth, according Mm -hmm. to 2 Thessalonians Mm -hmm. chapter 2. But that temple, whenever it's built, whether it is built before the rapture occurs or after, we're just not real clear Mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. The Bible doesn't Mm -hmm. give us an exact time and date. But we do know this, that somewhere during the tribulation period, that uh, this Antichrist will be, he'll start out as a man of peace, and even Israel will embrace him. They will think the Messiah has come. And the the breaking point, though, is when he sets himself up in the temple mm. to be worshipped as God. And I think, are you in Matthew? Oh, no, it, that was just an accident. It, well, okay, mm-hmm. well, I was going to say, if you want to go to Matthew chapter 24, Jesus actually talks about this, where when the Antichrist sets himself up in the temple to be worshipped, that the Jews then are going to reject him. You see, that's why they rejected Christ, because Christ claimed to be God in the flesh. And in Matthew chapter 24, give me a minute to get Mm -hmm. there. uh, Look at verse 15, if you would, and uh, read verse uh, 15, if you would, Laura. If I can find it. Matthew 24, verse 15. Okay, so when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, spoken through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand 
Is this the one you want me? Is yeah, that yeah, one? yeah. Okay. Go ahead and read yes. verse 16, too. Yes, and let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Now, and you go on and read that. Uh, read verse 21, if you would. My eyes are not very good, Tim. I'm sorry. Now, Mark knows this. but <laughs> <laughs> And these are Dollar Tree glasses. And they don't work very well. <laughs> I put you Maybe on the spot. <laughs> you put me on the spot. Where's it at? Where's it Verse at? Verse 21. I can't see it. Well, it says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as not uh, was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Now, here's yes. here's here's what that is saying. From, from verse 15 to verse 21, Jesus is saying, Watch for this man of sin to set himself up in the temple to be worshipped. And when he does that, the Jews are going to reject him. Uh -huh. And then all of the fury of the Antichrist is going to pour out on Israel. And that's why Jesus says there, them which be in Judea flee into the mountains, yes. which we believe could be a place called Petra, I which know is in Jordan. That. You've yes. heard that before. Yes. That that's where, because it seems to be a natural place where they will be able to hide themselves yes. and, and, and be protected and provided for. But see, what happens is this leads to the battle of Armageddon. Uh -huh. The Bible speaks of this in Zechariah, how that all nations of the world will come against Israel. This is right at the end of the tribulation period and it's the battle of armageddon all the nations are gathered in the valley of megiddo and yes. i've been there and seen that oh, wow. napoleon said that it's the greatest natural battleground on planet earth oh mm. my goodness. napoleon said that oh. the valley of megiddo no but kidding. when it looks just as if they are coming down on israel and are going to destroy them Jesus Christ returns with all of his saints that were raptured earlier. He returns, defeats the Antichrist and the false prophet. He stands on the Mount of Olives. And then the Bible speaks of the thousand year millennial reign mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. And that's how it forms. So the reason the temple is important is because when that temple is built, it will give access to eventually that Antichrist who will set himself up to be worshipped. Okay, so Petra's in Jordan. Yes. Okay, you yeah. know that the Jews have been buying up Jordan's land, yeah. and they're trying to put a stop to it. Right, you know yeah, that yeah, yeah. Uh, and and uh, now, I did not get to stay for the tour. When we when we toured Israel, we could have stayed an extry three days. Okay. My wife wanted me to come home. I don't know why, but oh, uh, anyhow. She missed yeah. Yeah, she <laughs> No, we have four yeah. kids. That's yeah. one oh, of the reasons. Your um, the, right. Uh, anyhow, uh, they you can tour that. You can check out Petra, and it's a natural. And you can go online and check out Petra, and uh, it's called. I think it's the Rose, the the Rose Rock, or Rose City, or yes. something. But okay. it, it's a natural formation where many Bible scholars believe this will be where the Jews will flee to. Uh, to avoid the, the wrath of the Antichrist and the armies of the world that come against them. Okay, now, now yeah. this is just a thought, and this is out there for a lot of people, but I'm kind of an out there type of person. But um, you mentioned even in this scripture about how Israel will, will look upon this as their Messiah, um, the Antichrist, and yeah. they will, you know, they will be in favor of yeah, they'll him. because he's bringing peace. And listen, that's what the Jews want. They want peace. Yes, yes. They're tired of having to constantly worry about things going on and i think it was netanyahu that said that they would follow satan or something if it meant bringing peace right. i think it was him but yeah. um but anyway um something that i wanted to say that there are some leading rabbis right now that are saying that the return of the messiah is so close don't even leave mm. israel yeah okay yeah, yeah now i'm going with this to a spot now the person right. that, that i study is tom horn and i really think a lot of this of this man and he's such a bible scholar but anyway he said it's almost the way that they're speaking as if they know who it is and they're waiting for the opportune moment to reveal. I have read that same thing. Have mm -hmm. you, Mark? I have read that, that some believe that the Antichrist is already here. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. And that's, they're calling him Messiah, mm -hmm. but we know that it will be the mm -hmm. Antichrist. The false Messiah. Be because false. Satan wants to duplicate everything yes. that, that Christ mm -hmm. does. And, uh, yeah, it'll be a false messiah. They are looking for, they don't believe the messiah has come at all. Right. You see, we're looking for the return of the messiah, Jesus Christ. They're looking for him to come and, and set up peace, you know, the first time. And I personally believe, can't prove it, we don't know mm -hmm. it, but that person may be walking on planet mm -hmm. Earth right now. Mm -hmm. um, That's and what again, I, that, yeah. I think that tells mm -hmm. us we need to be ready for Jesus Christ to mm -hmm. return. And, uh, you know, I mentioned a while ago, the, the Bible says that, that we will not know uh, who this is until 
uh, Christians are, are raptured. And I want to I want to read that so you know I'm giving that to you from Scripture. Mm-hmm. Um, verse six, Second Thessalonians chapter two. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. In other words, the iniquity speaks of sin or lawlessness. That 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 mystery of law and lawlessness is already taking place in our world uh-huh. right now. Doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That is speaking of the Holy Spirit. Right now, the Holy Spirit of mm-hmm. God is the only thing that is preventing mm-hmm. the Antichrist from coming on the scene in this world just going completely lawless Mm -hmm. it's the holy spirit which is indwelling every believer Mm -hmm. you take believers out of here Uh we think of the lawlessness Mm -hmm. that's going to take Mm -hmm. place in the world then if it's bad now just imagine what it will be like at that time so it's speaking about the the holy spirit now realize that the holy spirit is is ever present but the influence of the holy spirit and the believers will be taken away when the rapture occurs and then verse 8 says and then shall that wicked be revealed Okay. Speaking of the Antichrist, okay. then he'll be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So we, we won't know specifically, um, thank God, because we're going to be raptured. Mm-hmm. We're going to be Good. out of here. But Good. could he be living on the earth yeah. at this time? Yeah. Okay. See, I've always been a little unclear. Will we... Will we know who that person is um, or not? Yeah, according to that, like according to Second Thessalonians chapter okay. two, we are not going to know. He's not going to be revealed to the world until after believers are are raptured, caught away to meet the Lord. Okay. In the air. Question: Could we? Could he be brought onto the scene, but not actually titled? That's that's mm-hmm. possible. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that was just a thought. It, he could be somebody that's on our news every day. Yes, we, we just true. don't know. He's just not going to be revealed. Right. Whoever this, whoever, and you, you'd have to read the book of Daniel. I do a lot of study. Yes. But whoever this man is will be a very convincing person. Yes. He, right now, we've got chaos in our world. Mm. This man will bring uh, he'll bring peace. There will be peace among all world religions. There will be peace in the economy. It will be a very prosperous time, and it will look like he's got the answer to all of yes, the world's right, problems. Yes, right, right. Mm. Yeah. That's good. Mark, can we stay all day? Yeah, you know what? I wish we could. <laughs> I, mean, we could. You know, I mean, this is, I mean, this is it, it, it's intriguing. It's yes. it's knowledge that we need to know. Oh, yes, it's very interesting do. stuff. And nobody knows all the no. details. Uh-huh. I mean, you can study it and study it and read no. it, uh-huh. but, uh, but you need to get into it. You know, the Bible says a lot of a lot of us avoid the book of Revelation because mm-hmm. we think, man, it's just so so deep and detailed, and I don't know what's what's uh, reality mm-hmm. and what's allegory or whatever. But the Bible actually promises a blessing yes. for reading the book of Revelation. Right. It does. It That's says you're right. you're blessed just by studying mm-hmm. it. So yes. don't be afraid of these no, things. Dive into it and try to learn be. some more. Don't be. And it was Carl. Um, his last name is, is leaving me, but he has written some books regarding Revelation, and he said I read the book of Revelation ten times. Really? And, and, and so I did that too. And he says, it's like after you read it just over and over and over, you hear other people talk, it, it starts to class together. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, if, if you want to find something interesting, read Revelation 13 because that yes. talks about the, the Antichrist and then he's wounded. He, mm-hmm. he fakes a, re- a, a resurrection. Remember, Satan wants mm-hmm. to duplicate Christ. Right, right. And it talks about the mark of the beast. We've never lived in a time where you could you can track people through that. Yes. You can track finances and, and everything through just a simple mark or, or a chip or something right. like that. Tattoo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we live in a time when all these things are possible. Mm-hmm. That's why we believe the return of Jesus Christ is so near. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Everything just points to that time frame. Yes, yeah. it does. It's sure does. all culminating. Wow. Good stuff this morning with Pastor Tim Reynolds and Laura this morning here on the Vine Morning Show.